This video is brought to you by Purple War. The orcs in the 40k universe are more complicated than people tend to give them credit for. On one hand, they're absolutely terrifying. They're basically brutality incarnate. But on the other hand, are absolutely freaking hilarious. And for a faction that's unfairly all too often portrayed as being pretty stupid, some of these inventions are downright ingenious. Now, the orcs are able to make literally anything into a weapon. And this is due to two different reasons. The first is that the orcs have a really peculiar psychic ability that allows them to manifest their beliefs into reality. So even if by all accounts a machine shouldn't work, if the orcs believe it does, then it does. This is an ability that tends to get over-exaggerated in the community and it does have its limitations, but it nonetheless does result in a lot of really interesting creations. The second, and this one's more of a theory and isn't exactly proven, is that a lot of times their invention should work because they literally do. It's believed that there's some leftover knowledge in the orc's subconscious, placed there by their creators known as the Old Ones 60 million years ago. This knowledge would give the orcs an innate understanding of science and engineering, even if it's kind of rooted in their subconscious and on the surface level, they don't even really seem to understand it themselves. It seems like anything that the orcs set their mind to, they're able to manifest into reality. And since the orcs literally only care about fighting, this tends to take the form of a bunch of really bizarre weapons, such as taking a force field generator and rerouting that protective energy to instead come out of the barrel of a gun that fires bubbles that explode on impact. Or in another instance, repurposing a teleporter to cause their enemies to disappear and rematerialize at random, most often inside of a rock or thousands of feet up in the air. Their technology is hilarious, bizarre, and honestly, pretty damn effective on the battlefield. Trying to wrap my mind around how an army would even prepare to fight them is a monumentous task. The old saying of be prepared for anything is taken far too literally here. So today we're gonna deep dive 10 of the strangest and most ridiculous weapons the orcs have ever created. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video's sponsor. Purple War is an upcoming strategy game that, according to the developers, takes inspiration from games like StarCraft and WarCraft 3. Which, I mean, yeah, just by looking at the footage, I can clearly see that they took a lot of inspiration from WarCraft 3 specifically. But you know what? Considering the state of Blizzard these days and what they're doing with their beloved franchises, I'm actually totally okay with this. As I played the hell out of WarCraft 3 back in the day, and saying the game captures that feeling and isn't made specifically by Blizzard is honestly a pretty big selling point for me. Now, according to the developers, Purple War's gameplay is intuitive, easy to learn, and fast-paced, and has awesome multiplayer modes that support up to eight players. The game will have a strong emphasis on base building and resource gathering, Purple War looks like a lot of fun, and there really hasn't been a lot of RTS games released in the last few years. I feel like it's a genre that's kinda died off, so seeing a studio dedicated to keeping it alive is kinda awesome and should be respected. If you wanna try out the game for free, they're actually running an open playtest for it right now until August 7th. So click on the link in my description that will take you to their Steam page where you can request access. And apparently the Purple War team is preparing a special event in appreciation for all of their playtesters. So make sure to keep an eye on their Steam page and all of their socials for recent developments. A big thank you to the Purple War team for sponsoring this video and let's get into the grimdark. Number 10, the Orc Rock. So full transparency, the Orc Rock is probably my favorite invention on this list. It's what made me fall in love with the Orcs so many years ago. You see, this thing is exactly what it sounds like. It's a giant rock with a bunch of Orc shit glued all over it. But it's not just a rock, it's also a spaceship. You see, the Orcs will take an asteroid and hollow out a big chunk of it so they can live inside of it. Then they'll load it up with as many guns as they can find. The rock itself has no warp drive and thus it's incapable of warp travel. Now, sometimes it has a bunch of rocket thrusters glued randomly across its surface, allowing it to sort of control how it moves. But if I'm being honest, it mostly just floats around in the void of space, drifting from star system to star system, looking for more enemies to crump. And the idea of a bunch of orcs careening randomly through space, shouting insults at any other ships that happen to pass them by, brings me endless amounts of joy. Now, some pretty clever orc war bosses will chain the rocks to the undersides of their ships. And when their fleets attempt to invade a world, all of the ships will release the rocks that will then come barreling down on the planet as a quite literal weaponized meteorite. Now, the orc rocks are far more primitive than the high atmosphere ordnance of the Imperium, but they're nonetheless incredibly effective. Hundreds of these rocks will rain down upon a planet, unleashing untold devastation. The meteors leveling cities and causing massive explosions generated by their impact. Some will land in a planet's oceans and cause huge tidal waves, while others will crash into highly populated areas, taking out key command structures. And it's also a pretty big bonus that these rocks are full of orcs, itching to get stuck in a fight. Now, a lot of times the rocks will end up exploding on impact, destroying their angry green payload. But other times, the orcs inside will survive, 
flooding out and rampaging through the enemy's defenses. The rocks that do manage to survive the impact can serve as a fortified position for the orcs to hold. And it's honestly kind of genius. Uh, this thing is a spaceship, an ordnance weapon, a troop drop pod, and a movable bunker all in one. And the only major downside to the rock is that once it lands on a planet, it's kind of a one-way trip. There's no way for the orcs to get it back in orbit, so they either stay on the planet or scavenge what they can and leave the rock behind. Only the orcs could come up with the stupidest design ever, and it somehow manages to be kind of incredible. Number 9. The Rocket Hammer Okay, so the rocket hammer is exactly what it sounds like. It's a stick with a rocket that's been duct taped to the end of it. These things are most commonly associated with the tank busters, some wild and crazy orcs whose primal instinct to hunt the biggest beast has adapted to the grim darkness of the 41st millennium in a very peculiar way. They hunt down tanks nowadays instead. Lending a well-placed shot or slamming a rocket hammer into the side of a vehicle and causing it to detonate is a feeling like no other to these guys. Totally worth the risk they put themselves in. To the tank busters, killing your first tank is a rite of passage. And after an aspirant manages to take one of these metal beasts down, the boys celebrate by getting quote unquote tanked up where they devour the crew of the destroyed vehicle and get drunk on its engine oil. The rocket hammer is the most primitive version of orc tank hunting weapons and has existed in their culture since they first began using explosives. Although admittedly, back in the days of the Quarks, they were probably much more sophisticated weapons. Now, interestingly, the lore of the rocket hammer says that they are used by older tank busters most of all. They don't trust any of that newfound fancy rocket thruster technology. The orcs version of boomers remember the old ways, the good old days where all you needed was a stick and some heavy explosives to do some right good killing. Number 8. The Teleblaster So like most of the stuff on this list, the Teleblaster is pretty bizarre, but its underlying technology makes a lot of sense for the orcs. You see, the orcs love fighting more than anything else in the universe, and if an orc is smart enough to figure it out, they can turn basically anything into a functioning weapon. The Teleblasta is a weaponized teleporter, originally invented by an orc mech boy known as Orchimedes. When the gun is fired, the target will be folded into a bubble of space-time, disappearing and reappearing in a random location a short distance away, normally high up in the air or inside of a nearby rock. The gun can be incredibly unpredictable, but that's one of its main strengths. It causes an enormous amount of confusion within the enemy ranks, as their soldiers just start teleporting all over the place at random, sometimes rather harmlessly two feet to the left and other times, two feet to the right, but inside of their friend's chest cavity. I've seen enough sci-fi horror movies to know that teleporter accidents are truly terrifying, and yet somehow the orcs found a way to turn that into a gun. And although me or you may find the results truly horrifying, the orcs find it hilarious. Number 7. The Splata Cannon now, this is an old one that we haven't seen the orcs use in recent lore and hasn't been a playable model in years. You see, the Splata Cannon is a piece of artillery that fires a very weird shell known as a Splata Shell. The shell itself consists of a whole bunch of rockets that have been attached to each other by a long razor sharp chain with a large metal ball at the end of it. Now, normally these chains are made out of some type of razor wire or covered in spikes, depending on the orc who made it. When the cannon is fired, the chain spreads out in a wide arc and can cut down a large amount of infantry as it passes through them. But here's where things get interesting. Shortly after it lands, one of the rockets will ignite, causing the serrated ball and chain to spin around wildly within enemy ranks. Now, each of these rockets are on a timer, and as one begins to lose fuel, another one will kick on, sending it spiraling in a different direction. Its erratic and unpredictable movements can decimate enemy foot soldiers and does a pretty good job at disrupting unit formations. And although the ammunition of the Splata Cannon is downright medieval, I gotta admit, it's pretty inventive and actually really cool. And I truly hope that someday Games Workshop will bring this thing back to the tabletop game. Number 6. Bomb Squigs now you might not know this by looking at them, but squigs are actually a subspecies of orc, whose evolutionary path has taken them in a completely different direction. They're little more than a feral beast, and basically just a big angry mouth with legs. And the orcs absolutely love these guys, apparently they make great pets, and also taste really good. Now one particular use of squigs is as what is known as a bomb squig. You see, squigs have a tendency to chase down anything that moves, and try to eat it. So some genius orc got the idea to strap a whole bunch of bombs to it, and send it after tanks. Bomb squigs have been observed carrying all manner of different types of explosives, from pressure mines to tank buster bombs, and even just big shells from some of their cannons. But most of the time, the bomb squigs just have a whole bunch of grenades that have been duct taped to their body. When the squig is released, it will go careening after the nearest vehicle, and causes a massive explosion when it catches up to it and tries to latch on. 
Now every now and then the squig will get confused and chases after a friendly orc tank instead. And yeah, it's technically a setback when the bomb squig accidentally blows up an orc truck, but counterpoint, the orcs find this freaking hilarious. So it's not a complete waste. Number five, lift a drop a technology. There's actually a large array of different weapons that use what the orcs call lift a drop a technology. These include the classic lift a drop a, the tractor cannon, and the smash a gun. My personal favorite of which was the magna cannon, which I don't think is canon anymore, but just look at this old model. It's absolutely beautifully stupid and gets the idea across pretty well. The lift a drop -a is a large magno tractor beam powered by an atom smash -a reactor. It projects a magnetic field that can latch onto heavy objects or enemy vehicles and fling them around as if they were weightless. Most often, this will take the form of picking up an enemy tank and dropping it on the enemy troops, but it can also be used to grab large rocks or other debris and fling it around at enemy fortifications. And I know this weapon sounds pretty silly, but it can be absolutely devastating and wreaks havoc across the battlefield. Now, the tractor cannon is another weapon that utilizes the same technology, but it normally takes the form of an anti-aircraft cannon. The magnetic beam it fires attempts to latch onto an enemy aircraft, and once it's got a hold of it, it'll violently twist downward and smash the plane into the ground. And the orcs absolutely love these guns, and I can kind of get why. They seem like a lot of fun to use, and anyone who's played Half-Life 2 will totally understand this. If you're playing through the campaign and you're using any other gun besides the gravity gun, what are you even doing? Number four, the Squig Catapult. Another weapon in the orcs arsenal that's name spells out exactly what it is. The Squig Catapult is a catapult that fires squigs at the enemy, but not just any squig. You see, squigs are an incredibly varied species with hundreds of different creatures collectively all known as squigs. And a lot of them are radically different from one another. There are big squigs, small squigs, red squigs, blue squigs, and even hair squigs. One particular species of squig is what is known as a buzzer squig. You can think of it like a big, angry, carnivorous bee with a whole bunch of big teeth. The squig launcher traditionally fires a buzzer squig hive or a sealed pot containing an entire buzzer squig swarm. And depending on the hive size, it can contain dozens, if not hundreds of buzzer squigs. When fired, the squig pot goes careening through the air and smashes in enemy formations, unleashing its angry buzzing payload. The buzzer squigs become enraged and swarm over any nearby creatures they can find. Like a swarm of pissed off flying piranhas, they rip and tear at enemy infantry. Now, oddly enough, they won't actually attack any friendly orcs, as apparently the algae that flows in the orcs' bloodstream tastes absolutely disgusting to them. Now, these things are really difficult to deal with, and unless a unit has some type of flamer weapon, they'll probably stick around for a while. So yes, the orcs do literally fire hives of bees at their enemies. And despite how technologically advanced every species in the 41st millennium seemingly is, this primitive orcish technology is surprisingly incredibly effective. Number three, the bubble chukka. Now, as we established with teleporters being weaponized by the orcs, I think it's clear that their ingenuity knows no bounds, and they are definitely the smartest of all species to have ever existed. The bubble chukka is another example of peak orc engineering. It's force field technology turned into a bizarre but devastating gun. You see, the bubble chukka uses a force field generator, but instead of the force field wrapping around the orc in order to protect him, it's rerouted through the gun, and its energy is split into multiple bubbles. The gun can be set to several different modes and produce a wide array of different bubbles. The bubbles can vary wildly in size, shape, and power, some of them being massive and incredibly stable, slamming into enemy vehicles like a wrecking ball. Or the gun can be set to a rapid fire mode and fire out a massive wave of smaller bubbles that are relatively unstable and burst upon impact, each one functioning like a small force grenade. Now, sometimes the bubbles fire out incredibly quickly and go for a pretty long range, well, other times, it's like a shower of bubbles that slowly float down to the ground, exploding on impact. It's definitely a pretty bizarre weapon, but it's ultimately really effective. And it's pretty difficult to fight against an enemy that's literally firing bubbles at you. Like, how do you even fight that? Number two, the shock attack gun. So the shock attack gun is probably the most famous of the weird orc weapons. The gun generates a whole host of effects that are incredibly random and also super devastating. When fired, the gun generates a force field through the warp, creating two portals, one directly in front of the gun and another roughly in the location that it is being aimed. The orc controlling the gun then utilizes a vacuum type attachment to suck up a whole bunch of Gretchen and Snotlings, basically tiny, weedy, orc-like creatures that are more or less just sentient punching bags for the orcs. The Gretchen are then fired out of the gun and through the first portal. What happens next is pretty weird. You see, the Gretchen are being fired through the warp, which in the 40K universe is often depicted as hell itself. They're sent on their journey with no protection, 
and witness so many untold horrors and terrifying nightmares that they go absolutely batshit crazy. And time gets all weird in the warp. So in the physical universe, this journey may only take half a second. But for all we know, the Gretchen could have been in hell for a million years. After the journey is complete, the Gretchen rematerialize out of the second portal. And they come out absolutely mad, kicking and screaming and biting and slashing at anything in their immediate vicinity, terrified out of their tiny little minds. And the gun itself is pretty big and clunky. And when it's being fired is really difficult to hold still. So the portal has a tendency to drift around. It's not uncommon for the Gretchens to materialize inside of the bodies of enemy combatants, frantically ripping and bursting their way through the unlucky troopers. Other times, they'll materialize inside of a tank and massacre the crew. There's honestly no telling what's going to happen when the gun is fired. Its effects are incredibly unpredictable. Sometimes all that manages to come out of the second portal is a tidal wave of blood and guts and bone shrapnel. Other times, the Gretchen materialize a mile high up into the air and rain down on the enemy bursting on impact. And sometimes the second portal grows incredibly unstable and opens up a black hole into the warp, sucking everything in the vicinity inside. Needless to say, the orcs think it's a lot of fun, but it's also just, just a little bit terrifying. Number one, the orc attack moon. So the orc attack moon is much like the orc rock that we discussed earlier in the video. However, it's on a simply much more massive scale. You see, when it was originally created, it started off as any old regular orc rock, but then more and more stuff kept getting added to it. Whether that be other asteroids, small planetoids, or even moons, by the time it was done, it was absolutely gigantic in scale, bristling with weapons, and it even housed its own battle fleet. The orcs that controlled it were somehow able to travel faster than the speed of light without using the warp by traveling through a pocket dimension. And just before the attack moon would arrive, a whole host of strange gravitational phenomena would begin to appear across the planet's surface, and the moon could be seen flickering in and out of existence, each flicker ramping up the strange gravitational effects. When the moon did finally appear, it would materialize closer to a planet than the laws of physics should allow, and the sudden arrival of such a massive planetoid next to a world would wreak absolute havoc, causing a whole host of natural disasters, from tidal waves to devastating earthquakes. The moon would open its great mouth, and its roar could be heard on the surface below, heralding the arrival of the massive orc known as the Beast. The fleet of orc ships would then charge out of the mouth and attack the planet. When the invading orcs finally managed to achieve victory, and the world had been completely devastated, the orcs on the planet's surface would construct a gravity well-like facility, now this would begin the process of literally tearing the planet apart, and the subsequent chunks would then be added to the moon, increasing its size even further before it moved on to its next target. Now what's really scary about the attack moon is that it was just a prototype, and the orcs that were led by the Great Beast had planned on making many more of them. They were however eventually defeated, and since orcs tend to get smarter the more of them are around, with the beast's fleet dispersed, the orcs seem to have lost the ability to replicate the advanced technology needed to create an attack moon. So hopefully the galaxy will never see another one of these things. But with Thraka ramping up his great wog, it's very possible they may make a return. And that was 10 of the craziest and wildest orc weapons I could find. Which one was your favorite on this list, and which one do you think would be most effective in battle? Would you rather use a shock attack gun and throw goblins through hell at your enemies? Or do you prefer something a lot less complicated like the good old fashioned rocket hammer? Let me know down in the comments below. And also let me know if there's any orc weapons that I missed that you think should have been on this list. Thanks again to my patrons for supporting the content that I make. And if you'd like to help me make more videos like this, consider checking me out on Patreon, link in the description. And that's it, that's all I had to say about the orcs. I'll catch you in the next one.